Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is Psalm 119, verses 9 through 16. The Reverend Sean Denzer is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. Psalm 119. We sing section Baith, beginning with verse 9. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your Now the parable of the sower is this, the seed is the word of God. The ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. And the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no root. They believe for a while and in the time of testing fall away. And as for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience. O Lord, have mercy on us. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. Solomon famously says, train a child up in the way he should go, and he will not depart from it. That wisdom arises from this word way, which in Hebrew implies a rut or a lane. And from bitter experience, we know that this proverb can't be taken like some immutable scientific law. But even so, its wisdom stands. Start out on track. Get in the groove while you are young. The chances are better that you will continue in it. Now, the question that Psalm 119 asks, not like yesterday's reading, as a father advising his son, but as a young psalmist praying and asking it for himself. His question is how that way may be cleansed and kept clean. And the image here is not 
How can I find blinders to put on my horse so that nothing would distract me or lure me off the clean path? Rather, it is what guardrails can keep a sinful heart from jumping the curb? No surprise, the answer is the Word of God, the law which curbs and rebukes and guides, and the gospel which itself cleanses us. God's Word guards His way of truth. And that's why the church was once known simply as the way, the mouth house of Christ's Word, which is what makes this portion of the psalm so appropriate to this. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. Like our hymns that say, Lord, thee I love with my whole heart. The psalmist voices what is true of his Christian desire and what ought to be true fully of himself. And Christians, it is not lying for us to speak in this way. Indeed, it is entirely necessary for us to confess the truth, even if, and especially when, it contradicts what our hearts, at least in some of their parts, are thinking and desiring. We pray all the time, Thy will be done. We do it both in belief and to help our unbelief, to put our wills to death, so that Christ would raise them united to His will alone. So we cry out also that our whole heart would seek that one who is both clean and the cleanser of those who trust in Him. And thus, we always hasten to add, let me not wander from your commandments. Again, the straying heart is mentioned which only the Word can reveal and renew. I have stored up your Word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Here the Word might best be translated promise. The sayings of God are not only the stuff of tattoos or knick-knacks put on shelves or children's ditties. No, these are the solid nourishments This is the stuff that you stock up for hard times. They are the certainty that your God indeed loves you. He knows your needs. He knows your struggles and your successes alike. Store up the promise of this God. Hide Christ away. Plant Him deep in your hearts and treasure Him. And you too, then, will have the reaction of St. Paul whenever the thought comes to your mind to return to that former manner of life. By no means. Rather, we say, Blessed are you, O Lord, who has blessed me with everything needful. Teach me your statutes again. With my lips I declare all the righteous decrees of your mouth. What comes from the Lord's mouth is not really intended for the pages of those unread books. It's not even intended for the magnificent stone tablets that he himself carved, that they would be hid away in an ark behind a curtain. No. His word fills up the heart. His words do their work, dwelling in us so that we would dwell and walk in Him. And so, just as they came from His mouth, they belong on our lips. And not as lip service, but in confession. We do not talk ourselves mindlessly into Christianity each day but rather with heart and with mind fully engaged, we talk ourselves and others into the Lord's wisdom and truth. The church of God is the ground and the pillar of this truth, Paul wrote to Timothy, instructing him how a young man ought to behave in the house of God. His instruction is that the Spirit is able to turn 
that desperately wicked and wild heart of ours, into the source of something other than just wickedness. This is what we'll hear about tomorrow. But lastly today, in the way of your testimonies, I delight, O Lord, as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. If we did not learn this lesson as young men and women, we will struggle with it down the way for sure. But it still holds true. The Lord with his word is our priority. His word must be our priority, both out of our desperate need, but also out of our joyful delight. His word is the true treasure. It's the true source of all growth. His testimony is that he in Christ is for us, and he is devoted to our salvation. Delight in the way of his testimonies, then, is both saving faith and loyal living in word and deed toward the one who has rescued and us and promised to be ours always. Now, how does one cultivate such a delight in him and his word? How can that be quickened again once it has been snatched away or scorched or choked out? Well, certainly in no other way than ever. He who has ears, hear. The Lord's word graciously has not been removed from his house, from the church, nor has it been removed from us. Meditate on it then. Fix your eyes on what lasts and hide it away as a cleansing treasure in your heart. And guard against yourself with the fruitful confession and with the faithful vow. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. Today we pray for Chaplain Vincent Shaw, who is deployed. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.